what it is, people. It's your boy, Doggy Diamonds. I'm all the way up in the BX right now. And I'm here with a very special guest. Her face probably look familiar to y'all. But just in case her face don't look familiar to some of y'all, I'm going to let her tell you who she is. Let them know. I'm Liza Rios, the wife of the late great rapper, Big Pun. Okay. And we're up here. I got a phone call from somebody that, that you needed to, you know, talk about some things. And everybody know I'm the go-to guy for some of that. When you want to talk about something, I'm there. So, um, basically, the Puerto Rican Day Parade was recently. Right. Why didn't you go? Um, I said I'm not going to be on the float. I'm not going to be out there in the crowd. I usually went with Pun after that. After Pun passed, I only went one after that. And after that, I haven't gone. So do they have any, like, big pun floats, memorials, or anything at the parade? Not at all, which I think is something that's very important that they should do. Uh -huh. You know, because the Puerto Rican Day Parade is a pun day. You know, and all the Boricuas, they love pun. And I think it, he should be recognized. He was Boricua, the only person who did it. You know, so he definitely should have a memorial float every year. So, like, who, who's in charge of, of that? That should make that go down, you think? Well, I mean, I think once he passed, you know what I'm saying, it would have been, you know... A nice gesture to do anyway. Yeah, it, once he passed, the people who he was signed to, you know uh -huh. what I'm saying, they were the ones in the position. You know what I'm saying? Like Puffy was in the position with Pete, with, um, with Biggie. Uh -huh. Right? And, you know, he kept you know, his memory alive, and then it keeps going. So the people who was in that position to do it for Pun should have did it and never did. And so that's a problem. So, so how, much do, how much do you know about the music industry and the music business? Well, I know pretty much a lot. I know when I'm getting okay. fucked. <laughs> you okay. know what I'm saying? Um, I learned a lot hands-on just looking at Pun dealing with his deal, you know what I'm okay. saying, dealing with what he goes through. So, you know, I got lawyers, I ask questions, you know, I don't got a problem asking questions. I just learned, so, you know, I pretty know, my, I pretty know much how, like, how it goes. So what, what kind of, like a lot of people don't know, what kind of, um, from, from what you know, what kind of deal did he have? Well, the first deal he got when he first signed, it was a $275,000 deal. The okay. deal that he got was that... Everything, every monies, any advances, any payments, he would break down half with Joe. Okay. And there was also manager fees for Joe and for Flex and stuff. Right? You know, I know once after, you know, you go plan, you know, you whatever I know, I understand you got to recoup everything, videos, uh -huh. all that. That's all understood. But um, even there was a point where he was asking for his royalties. You know okay. what I'm saying? So, you know, and he's never gotten them to this day, except for one check that I've gotten for Endangered Species, which was... um. Recouped, I guess, in like in 2004, four, three, for like almost 15 G's. When I called about it, it's like I haven't received the check. It's like they don't know anything. So yeah. Your lawyers, you got lawyers for. I hope you do have lawyers. I do have lawyers, but okay. I've been stressed with them because okay. they have not been doing their job. I'm not even gonna front. I'm tight because they, you know, they they have, they are not aggressive as much as I need them to be. You okay. know what I'm saying? So who who would they contact? They've contacted um Joe as okay. far as with he's the one that he's the one that administrated his um the deal which means okay. all the monies went to him first so he'll break pun off that's how the deal was set up and under the royalty statements um capital punishment and yeah babies is under Ted Squad Productions this is what the lead was telling me okay so I I try to have it one day that I say once I got the check for the endangered species mm -hmm. I say you know let's put everything under the estate you know do things the way it's supposed to I've I went up several times and spoken to them and, you know, basically they gave me the run around and said that the only person that who could change that or fix that is Joe. So he's been reached out and, you know, it was just so certain statements, but that's not showing me anything, no books, that's not showing me anything, you know, I mean, it's been 10 years, you know what I'm saying, you know, that, you know, he has been recouped, you know what I'm saying, it's like, it's there, so. Financially, um. What what kind of struggles have you been through? Well, it hasn't been it hasn't been easy, you know, to to maintain the lifestyle that Pun had for the kids. Okay. You know, um, I've gotten money. It's not like I haven't gotten any money. Okay. I've gotten money like when I signed off Remy Martin and Tony Sunshine. Okay. Because they were under foundation originally, signed okay. them off to Terror Squad. Okay. And I got seventy five thousand for that. Um, one time I got one hundred and sixteen thousand for um, for publishing okay. through Jelly Bean. And then, um, you know, you get your ASCAP checks here and there, which, okay. you know, they range here and there. And, um, and just, just uh, the house alone, the house alone that he had bought um, before he passed, um, it was at a $1,400 mortgage, almost 15. Mm -hmm. Once he passed, I kept it under his name. They went it, up, it went up to 2000 And I had it, like, for five, six years. So you figure 2000 a month for five years, that's over, way over $120-something thousand dollars. 
Then you think about the gliding guys, taking care of kids, the food. So basically all the money got sucked out and, you know, it's not like I'm living lavish. I got fur coats and, you know, rumors been out there that I've gotten millions of dollars and I got that, that millions of dollars been given to me and I've got, you know, houses and cars and, you know, I'm just on this stuck up shit and that's not the case. You know what I'm saying? And I wanted people to know because it's, I owe the truth to Punch fans. A lot of fans come up to me and ask me, you know, what's going uh -huh. on and, you know, I gotta be honest and it is what it is. So what's some of the things that, like, you have to do personally to maintain? Well, I've done, I mean, I've been blessed, because okay. every time, I, you know, when I, I've, you know, I've been blessed. I, if money just comes to me, I, I've done certain deals. I had a documentary that I did back on um, the Big Pun Live, uh -huh. um, there's still not a player. Um, got some money from that. Then, you know, um, just certain deals. I had a clothing line a few years ago, okay. you know, say for pun, like for three years, so that brought income. Um, and just income that, you know, I, I've bartended, you know, I've done certain things. You know, but I, I, I make, you know, I make, I make my ends meet. I do, you know, do what I gotta do. So, you know, a lot of people looking at this right now might say, well, she, she's looking for pity. She's looking for sorrow. Definitely she, not. She need to, she need to do something to maintain because part yeah. is not here. What do you want to say to those people? Well, basically, I, I do what I gotta do. Like in September, I should be working for the board of ed. You know okay. what I'm saying? So, okay. you know, it's, it's not like I'm, you know, I'm going back to school because I was a dropout, never went okay. to school. I, you know, did the whole wife thing, you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely paying consequences of that. I've had to grow, you know, throughout these years. Uh -huh. You know, um, I'm going back to school to want to go for psychiatry, but you know, so that's 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 gonna be good with that. But um. My whole point is like I'm not on this asking for anybody for anything because okay. I never did anyway. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I manage, I do what I gotta do, and I'll get you know I'll get on top regardless. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My whole point of just coming out is telling you the story is that you know pun pun who's sitting right here, pun put that nigga on. You know what I'm saying? Pun uh -huh. put Joe on. You know what I'm saying? And you know a lot of people think that I'm being taken care of, and I don't want him to take care of me. I don't want nobody to take care of me. That's one thing I hate. Oh, Joe's not taking care of you, Joe. No, I don't want that nigga to take care of me. I just want whatever's due to point, whether it's a dollar, whether it's a million dollars. You know what I'm saying? Just show me the truth. You know, you tell them people that I got a million dollars, and where's where's the paper trail of that? You know what I'm saying? I can prove to you I never got a million dollars. Uh -huh. I can take a lie detector test, and we can do this all over again, and we get a lie detector test, and I'm nothing. Well, you know, I'm, I'm telling the truth. You know what I'm saying? My whole thing is that. You know, people gotta know that it's, it's shiesty, you know, you fucked up on pun, you know what I'm saying? Like, pun had mad love for this nigga. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's really the business, pun had mad love for him. You know what I'm saying? Pun put him on the map. You know what I'm saying? Pun wrote all his shit, was a creative force behind Terror Squad. You know what I'm saying? Wrote every song that Joe's on, you know what I'm saying? Pun wrote everything. His verse, pun's verse, the hook, you know what I'm saying? The whole creative force behind, you know, the videos, everything. You know what I'm saying? Don Carter Jr., he wrote, you know, he wrote, everybody writes his shit. You know what I'm saying? It goes from Pond, then it goes to Remy, then it goes to Armageddon. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's just, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, at the end of the day, it's hurtful because if it was just me, you know, fuck it, I'm a bitch, I'm a bitch, I'm a bitch, right? But he got three kids that he loved, and everybody knew about his kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, he made it known to the world that, you know, he loved his wife and his three kids. So whatever that's due to him, you know what I'm saying? It should be due to him. It should be given to him straight up and down. He deserved it. I say he put his heart and soul into his music. You know what I'm saying? And if he knew what the fuck was going on today, that nigga be flipping. That nigga would flip. And if he was alive, then that shit would have been popping off. You know what I'm saying? Because niggas were scared to death of that nigga. That nigga would have fucking ripped his heart out, you know what I'm saying? And fed it to his kids. That's what Pun would have did. You know, blessed the dead, but is, is some of it possibly Pun's fault? That of course, didn't... I do blame okay. him. I do, I, do, I, I, I do get upset with him, and I've gotten upset with him. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, and I would tell him, like, yo, you know what I'm saying? You got to handle your business. You can't just trust. You teach me not to trust anybody. But you're not following your own advice because you trust in somebody to just run your whole shit. You know what I'm saying? You was a whole creative force, but you got to learn the business. You got to learn what's going on. You got to ask, you know. And, you know, when Pun did hit things his way, you know what I'm saying? And I used to tell him, at the end of the day, I don't want to, I don't want to, how to go through this, you know what I'm saying, you know, your family's stressing for money, you know what I'm saying, you know, having no money, you got three kids, you know what I'm saying, you got your kids that you got to take care of. I said, it's never been about me, it's always been about him and the kids. It's never been about me, you can ask anybody that knows me, it's never been about me, it's always been about them. You know what I'm saying, so at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, he should have been smart. Hell yeah, he should have been smarter and, and had something, you know what I'm saying, to make sure that his kids was going to be right. I guess after he passed, when did you see that the situation wasn't gonna go according to I saw within shape. that year. Within that year, mm -hmm. I noticed that after he passed, that things wasn't. I still had Remy and Tony Sunshine like signed to Foundation, and you know she was you know stressing to get signed, and and um, 
And, you know, Joe, you know, whatever Joe was saying that, you know, he was waiting on the label, was taking a lot of time. And at the end of the day, you know, he was feeding, you know, shit to their head that Pone was going to jerk them and, you know, and, and I didn't know anything about the business and they'll be better off with them and so forth. So, you know, he kicked the game and they fell for it. You know what I'm saying? And I signed them off with no problem because I'm not trying to keep nobody who don't want to be kept. You know what I'm saying? They're going to have to learn this shit their own way. You know what I'm saying? That they did. From there, I started to just realize, like, things just started unfolding. You know, I signed them off to Terror Squad, um... To Terror Squad production, it, to much entertainment Terror Squad, because it's going to be Foundation Records, Terror Squad, and whatever major label will pick them up. So then I signed them off to Mach Entertainment, Terror Squad. And the crazy shit about it is that, like, two weeks before Pun died, right, Macho comes to the hotel where we were staying up in White Plains, right? Okay. And um, they were telling him, he just he just told us that he got the cover for the source, right? Mm -hmm. So he went up there to tell him, you know, what's up with the cover and all that shit. And as soon as he came into the hotel room, he had a chain with a crown that said Mach Entertainment. I've never seen that shit before until that first day. You know what I'm saying? I see these niggas every day. You know what I'm saying? So I told him, like, yo, what's, what's good with that? And then he just pushed me by when, you know, did his business pun and broke out. So then, you know, I didn't think about it until when I signed him off. You know what I'm saying? To March Entertainment Terror Squad. Now, if you was a real nigga that you really had puns back, and let's say I didn't know about the business, and let's say pun was jerking or whatever, you still could have kept them on the foundation because the kids would still eat. You understand? You could come and be like, yo, you know what? I'm going to do all the work. I'm going to run shit. You're going to sit on your ass. You take 40. I'm going to give the kids 40. I take 60. I wouldn't even have a problem with that. You know what I'm saying? But then, you know, that's not where the heart is at. You know what I'm saying? That's a, that's a real nigga would have did that. You know what I'm saying? In my eyes. But, you know, he ain't real like that. So, from there, I started just realizing, just fitting things together and just seeing that, you know, the shit was just bullshit. You know what I'm saying? What was your relationship with, um... With Remy, because I know she always spoke highly of Pun. It was cool. I mean, I never had a problem. I, I, I actually convinced Pun, like, you know, he'd be a fool not to sign her, because uh -huh. she was amazing. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, the day she came to the house, she was just spitting fire back mm -hmm. to back to back. And I'm like, yo, you need to sign her. So um, we was cool and everything, but at the end, it was hurtful for her to, like, not sign with Pun and to go. She felt loyalty. She knew where Pun and Pun brought her in, but she felt loyalty to Joe, and I understood that. You know, she, you know, we didn't speak for years until, like, seven years ago mm -hmm. that we spoke for the first time. And I never told her to stay away. I never had any problems with her. Like, my problems with not, nobody but with the person who got my money. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's the only person I got a problem mm -hmm. with. You know what I'm saying? So um, we spoke, you know, and she was cool about it. And then um, she did a show for me, you know, at one of the um, tribute events in 2007. Okay. Then I speak to her recently, and after the whole her drama happened uh -huh. and shit, spoke to her like that Wednesday before she went to trial. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Spoke to her for a while, you know, caught up. And, um, you know, she was asking about my situation. And she, you know, she's like, I'm sick to my stomach that you live in that way. It shouldn't be that way. You know, she was telling me about her problems with Joe. You know, how, you know, he, you know, she's writing all her shit and she ain't living. And, and um, then she was saying how she got signed the first album. She got 90000 And then she told Joe and Steve Rifkin, like, you know, off the top, I want you to give 10000 to the kids. You know what I'm saying? Off the top, you know. And she's going on her story. She said that she, how she went. She got 60000 And then she got paid fifteen for taxes. And... You know, she was upset because she couldn't really walk with the 55. And she went, so I'm like, hold on. I said, what, you gave the kids 30 Gs? And she was like, yeah, I gave it. I said, you know, I'm sorry, boo. I thank you and I appreciate it, but I never got that shit. So she was tight. So I swear to God, of course, I said, no, I believe you, but I'm just saying. You was better off just walking right in my front door and just giving it to the kids. And I said, because I never got it. I'm cool with her. I actually got, spoke to her brother today. I got the information where she's at. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I'm definitely going to see her. You know what I'm saying? She she got visitations every day and on the weekend. So yeah, well, definitely. Definitely hold her down. What do you think some of the things that should be, that should have been done, that should be done to keep Pun's memory alive? Well, everything that's being done with Biggie and Pac. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You know, it should be, a, you know, a foundation which... I'm trying to set up, you know, in his honor. Mm -hmm. So I definitely wanted to do it on as far as focus. Focus, of, of course, on inner city kids, but mainly, mainly on obesity. Uh -huh. You know, you know, there's yeah. a whole bunch of, the obesity is a problem. Uh -huh. So I definitely want to focus on that. Hip-hop honors. Mm -hmm. It's been out for, what, three, four years? Mm -hmm. Nobody's honored pun yet. Um, you know, there's no behind the scenes. There's no driven. There's nothing. No e-story. There's nothing on pun. Like, well, whose fault is that, though? That is not. I don't know. Fault. I don't know. I mean, I, I tried. That. I mean, I could do but so much because I'm not yeah. in the, the industry. You know what I'm saying? And you sometimes think you don't know how. And... You know, and it's 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 hard because that, that I tried one time. I give you an example. I tried one time in 2001. I, I opened up the Big Pun Foundation here in the uh -huh. Bronx with Ruben Diaz, Superman okay. Ruben Diaz. And I had these guys that they were financially back and wanted to do a fundraiser tour. Uh -huh. I say raise money for the you know the foundation and so mm -hmm. forth and keep Pun's memory alive in a positive way, so forth. 
had a great opening and everything. And, you know, we asked everyone in the industry to get on board. And since they knew that Joe wasn't going to perform, I was dealing with Joe or the problem. And I'm saying, so no one wanted to get on. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, nobody wants to get on, you know, um, and that was the reason. It was straight up. We don't want no problems with Joe or, you know, Joe's I don't want to be a part of it. So basically, I was like blacklisted. So I wasn't able to work anywhere in the issue or get anything done because nobody wants to do anything. You know what I'm saying? And I only got to do one show. You know what I'm saying? Daddy Yankee was there. That was before he was even big like that. Cuban, of course, came out, you know, the, you know, Triple Sace. Um, the big headlines was Ashanti. She came out, which they told me that she tried to back out last minute, but she couldn't because of any check was paid, contract signed. DMX came out. He did a great show, rocked the crowd. Even had to pump himself in the middle of the shit. Went to the after party, rocked the crowd. And him himself, he was the only nigga that was real. Him himself told me, you know who called me not to come, right? He said, but well, fuck that, I'm going to come anyway. You know what I'm saying? You know, I love pun, you know what I'm saying? The kids, you know, he threw God, he spoke about God and everything. So it was cool, you know what I'm saying? But... Everybody, it's crazy. I gotta, I, I gotta keep it gangster though. That that's that's some crazy shit for some nigga to do and have that much control over people. You know what I'm saying? For you to tell a grown man, yo, you know, I can't do that because this dude. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas can't think for themselves. Like that's some real pussy shit. You know what I'm saying? So that I don't got respect for that. I don't see that as them niggas who Joe run and they take his orders. That you know. Why do you in? And Joe have a problem. Why do you I don't. Problem? I don't have a problem. My problem. I. I don't have anything personal against him at all. I never did. There was one time he sat here on this bed. You know what I'm saying? And How long I, was that? this was back in the same year after around loyalty. Okay. Around, around, no, I don't know if it was before the one loyalty around that time. It was the one before I think loyalty. Uh -huh. And um, he was doing a lot of uh, radio promotion. It was around right before the time I dropped my documentary. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I was calling him like, yo, what's good? You know, I want to know what's going on with, you know, the situation with the money and, and the books. And like, you know, because I'm business. I learned the business just watching and hearing. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's let's see what's good. You know what I'm saying? What's due to pun? He, I guess, ain't want no bad publicity at the time. So he came through right away. You know what I'm saying? Sat here, sat all guy, you know, no. And, and I'm explaining to him, like, what's good? Like, you know, show me what's good. And he said, you know, just going back. Like, he said at one point, like, like, he felt pun was signed to him, and like, that I shouldn't even be getting anything at one point. And I was like, yo, you know, you could teach me, you know, teach me the ropes, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm ready to learn, you know, I just want to make sure that the kids are good and that he gets what is due to him, you know what I'm saying? I don't want nothing more, nothing less. Just what's fair, what's due to him. And, you know, and, and he said that he was going to, um, that he was going to, you know, work it out, and definitely he was going to, you know, come and contact me, and we going to do it and everything. And, you know, it was backed up. I was foreclosing at that time, you know, I was like 12000 in the hole. And um, he came through, he said he was going to get on the documentary, he gave me 20 Gs, you know what I'm saying? I got up on the mortgage and the rest, you know, I just, you know, with the kids, it was around Christmas time, you know what I'm saying? But um, then after that, you know, he even sat in my, fun's, my son's face and grabbed his face and said, you want to rob? He said, nah, I'm going to help you out, I'm going to do whatever, whatever. But he never followed through, so after a while, I'm not a type of business, I can keep calling you and stressing you. I let you do you, you know what I'm saying? See, you know, if it's in your heart, you're going to do it, you know what I'm saying? So from there, I just started realizing that, you know, it, it was just bullshit, you know, and I don't have no problem with him. You do your shit, whatever, whatever. I just want what's fair to this man. Didn't y'all have um, a back and forth on the radio? Myself? Yeah, we did, back when. What, what provoked and what started all of that? Well, I was on the radio, and um, there was a point that I guess they asked me financially, whatever, and I just like, yo, Joe, how at me, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get at you, you know what I'm saying? I've been calling this and that, you know, get at me. And then he decided to get at me on the radio. He decided to take it to the radio. I did. I just said, get at me. He could have just got at me at another time. You know what I'm saying? And I was just straight business. Just like, you know, I just want to know what's going on with the royalty situation. Like, you know, I don't know what came in, what came out. Like, you know, I know I just, you know, I, I need to know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? And um, he was just saying how nobody gets royalties and that's crazy. And then I just kept the business and he started throwing personal shit in the air. And, and it just got crazy. Started cursing at each other, yelling, and they just shut us down. From that, what's his problem with you? What I don't do you know. Think? I don't know. Like what was what was something I don't think it, I honestly I don't think it's a problem with me at all. The okay. problem is that he's just grimy that way. Like why would I, I don't know why would he he just greedy that way. Like he always skimmed off money. So if, if he's getting the money, why not? If, if you know, I, I, he knows I, I'm not in a position where I can get any legal, real legal, you know, legal counsel. You know what I'm saying? I don't got that guap to pay that legal counsel to fight anything. You know what I'm saying? You make it hard for me to make any money in the business. At the end of the day, you want punch to be forgotten. Because you wanted to be that nigga, you, you know really what I'm saying? Think that? I really think so. I swear to God, I really think so. You gotta understand. Back when Pun, Pun, Pun was out, Pun was Joe was on that flow, Joe. So he was the only boy that trying for a minute. You know what I'm saying to make it, you know. And he was, you know, he was what he was. You know what I'm saying? When Pun found Joe, 
what I'm saying? Poe made it his business to find Joe to get on because Poe was like, you know what? This is a body guy. I got a lot of respect for him. You know, he wanted to represent, you know, with him. You know what I'm saying? So he made his business. Went, found, went to um, Forest Projects, found himself in the bodega, waited till he came out, spit a rhyme, from there was history. Joe was a smart man. He's a very intelligent man. It would have been crazy if he would have let him go because he would have signed to anybody else. Joe would have not existed. If Joe Pone would have signed to any other person that was out there and he would have came up with Capital Punishment, there would have been no Joe. But you know, a lot of people might say, it might not have been no pun if it wasn't for Joe. No, exactly. No, he, whatever he did for pun, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, is totally credit. I don't take no credit uh -huh. away from that. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Credit is due. He did his dizzle. You know what I'm saying? He worked. He did his shit. He had, he had a lot of belief. He had a lot of, you know, belief in pun. But pun was just a cash machine. Pun's relationship with Joe was more brother love. His was just straight business. You know what I'm saying? It, it seemed like brother love, but at the end of the day, it's straight business. But, it, but, it, but, but is Joe wrong for that, though? It is if you play if you if you act like you you your your twin my brother and and at the end still knowing that that shit ain't right you mm -hmm. still give me shout outs in the in the Puerto Rican Day Parade why you give me a shout out you know what I'm saying there's times that he's giving me and my kids shout outs because he wants to make the public know that you know think that you know I'm getting support you know how many punch fans come to me and be like what that you don't get I thought. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what it is. You know, you play, you talk your shit behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? The industry, you know what I'm saying? They hold them down, whatever. In the public eye, you acting like, you know, you're taking care of the family and the family's good. You know what I'm saying? I haven't said nothing in years. You know what I'm saying? I said it back in 2001, too. You know what I'm saying? Niggas thought I was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Then everybody started talking.